everyone. Good morning. Although it's not morning, it's afternoon at this point, huh? But we've been we've been busy at it. It's been a it's been an exciting road show this morning. We started in Newton where together with our legislative partners, we were able to sign into law Massachusetts most historic and largest investment ever in housing, 5 billion dollars. And So that was a great way to start the day and something that we made a priority when we took office was to make sure that we were doing all that we could to build more housing in the state and I'm so glad today we were able to deliver on that. And we, here we are, moving to this, this wage transparency celebration. This is so, so exciting and I think, you know, for me, for the LG, um, the first all-female team in the country ever elected, this is a... Um, It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a great day. It's a great day. And it's, uh, it's especially great to be able to welcome back to the State House Lieutenant Governor Evelyn Murphy. <laughs> You know, I don't know anyone in America who has worked harder, more diligently, more persistently for years on wage equity and the simple proposition that women should get paid the same as men for the work that they do than Evelyn Murphy. And we're just so happy that we get to be here to celebrate what really has been something years in the making and as we have followed in your footsteps here in the State House, we know that millions of women will follow the path that you have forged and as a result of today's work by the legislature and the advocates, more women are going to have more opportunity, which is what this is all about. It's great. Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and I are proud to be joined by so many wonderful people. Our great treasurer, Deb Goldberg. Our Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren Jones. Our Undersecretary for Apprenticeships, Josh Cutler, but importantly helped chair this in a prior life. Uh, back when he was with his colleagues in the legislature. So he was a driving force as a legislature in, on this. Our bill's sponsors, Senator Liz Miranda, Representative Dave Rogers, Representative Christine Barber, Representative Brandy Fluker Oakley, who replaced Rev Cutler um, on this, and former Representative Liz Malia. We're so grateful to all of you and grateful to our conference committee folks as well. Um, Senator Pat Jalen, Senator Paul Feeney, Senator Patrick O'Connor, Representative Danielle Gregoire, Representative Brandy Fluker Oakley, Representative Hannah Kane. Um, thank you all. Thank you as well to Senator Joan Lovely and the Women's Caucus. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> We also have with us other champions, Lee Pelton from the Boston Foundation, who's provided critical support. Deliza Nova from Amplify Latinx and all those who've been working so hard on racial justice and intersectional equity, including Colette Phillips, Nicole Obi of BECMA, leaders of our Black and Latino Empowerment Councils, Tanisha Sullivan, Tony Richards, Josian Martinez, and Gladys Vega. Thank you. 
members of business, our great business leaders. We have with us Jim Rooney from the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce and Brooke Thompson from Associated Industries in Massachusetts. All the employers who've been important participants and role models in this work. I also want to thank Megan Driscoll, who is with us here as well, because she and Evelyn Murphy were um, leaders of our Wage Equity Now Coalition, so thank you. Look, this legislation, I was proud to advocate for it as Attorney General, and I am really proud to be able to sign it into law as governor. We, um, you know, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, we're number one in so much. Number one in education, number one in innovation and entrepreneurship. We're also number one when it comes to women. We have been voted the best state to live in if you are a woman, and this is a further example of that today, what, uh, what you all are doing. Also, we know that being number one isn't good enough if you're a woman in this state and making 79 cents on the dollar, if you're a black woman earning 54 cents on the dollar, or if you're a Latina woman earning 42 cents on the dollar. So today, we are about changing that. That's what wage transparency is all about because you, you can't fix it if you can't measure it, right? So it's a pretty simple proposition. Um, this legislation is enacted in a spirit, not of being punitive, but in a spirit of working together and improving. That's how it was designed, and I am grateful to the legislators for their work in crafting this. We can be more intentional at what's happening in our workplaces. And we can celebrate this because it's going to make our workforce stronger, our economy stronger, Massachusetts stronger. Finally, I want to thank the legislature for naming this law after Frances Perkins. Okay. I mean, it doesn't get any more Massachusetts than this. Frances Perkins, she's born in Boston. She grows up in Worcester. She goes to school out at Mount Holyoke in South Hadley. Covers the whole state. I'm sure she vacationed or spent time on the Cape too at some point. She covered it all. Importantly, importantly, she was the first woman ever to serve in a presidential cabinet under FDR as labor secretary. She led the charge to create, she created social security, the minimum wage, unemployment insurance, child labor laws, and so much more. A woman born, raised, schooled right here in Massachusetts went on to do those things as U.S. Labor Secretary. So I think it's awesome and appropriate that this is now named for her. Um, I would now like to welcome to the podium another great pioneering woman, and that is our fabulous treasure, Deb Goldberg. Well, we also want to acknowledge Representative Jay Livingstone. Where is he? Right there. Great. You couldn't see him. I had so many women, I couldn't see you, Jay. Sorry. Um, love you. Where's, uh, there, there, there's more, more, and all the staff, too, for all the, all the offices that work so hard on this. Mayor LaChapelle came out, former Boston City Councilor. Anissa Sabi George is here. Um, and, and others uh, and others to be named later. Thank you. And Treasurer Goldberg, who has been a, a champion on wage equity and also financial literacy and empowering especially women. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank Governor Healy and the administration for their leadership in getting this important legislation over the finish line, finally. And I, I say finally because I go back to the 1990s on this with our esteemed Lieutenant Governor, Evelyn Murphy. 
Evelyn has been one of my mentors for, we won't count the number of years, and one of her mentors was a woman named Carol Goldberg. That may sound familiar to some of you. With the last name, it's no coincidence that between her and Evelyn, I came into office on a platform of wage equality and wage transparency. And then it said, how do we get it done? So transparency is a key feature to how you establish wage equity throughout our commonwealth. So that's why from the very beginning, in our offices, we posted what the wages would be. And what was fascinating at the beginning is we would have women and women of color apply for jobs and ask for less money because that's what they were used to. And we would say, no, we're going to hire you, but we're going to hire you at this salary. And that is what everyone would get, whether they were a man or a woman, or a person of color or not. This transparency attracts a broader pool of highly qualified people because they know they'll be treated fairly and that they will advance fairly. And we all know what the statistics say. Organizations that have more women and more people of color are representative of our world and most importantly, more successful, including financially. And part of our financial education programs is making sure that women and people of color have the tools they need in order to understand their rights and how to address what has consistently been a ceiling for them. But this law makes all the difference in the world, and I give this lady over here a hell of a lot of credit for never giving up. I took a picture with her upstairs. I'll be delivering it to my 93-year-old mother this weekend. I can't tell you what that means. I see someone in the back row who knows. And I want to thank every single person who stuck with it, who worked for it, who joined in, and together we all made it happen. So thank you, everybody. It's a glorious day. And now I'm excited to turn it over to Labor and Workforce Development Secretary, Lauren Jones. Thank you so much, Treasurer Goldberg, Governor Healy. I want to also acknowledge some more um, special people that are here today. Certainly, Mayor LaChapelle, uh, please wave if you're here, Representative Howard, and Representative Connolly. Certainly, we know more are joining, joining us as the celebration continues, and we're so thrilled to be at the State House where we can celebrate together. So, Governor, thank you especially for bringing us together to celebrate the signing of wage transparency right here in Massachusetts. You probably hear Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll often talking about how we can invest in a more affordable, competitive, and equitable commonwealth. And this newly enacted law reflects Massachusetts' commitment to do exactly that. In fact, equity is at the heart of our administration's workforce agenda. In work, working collaboratively across all levels of government, labor, business, and advocacy, we have a, a responsibility to identify solutions like wage transparency to tackle the disparities that we know have long persisted in our workforce. And now, being among the first of several states to support wage transparency, we have the tool in our toolbox for workers to be more informed and for employers to be more intentional, to create a more even playing field that will attract and retain the diverse, competitive, and productive workforce that we know we need to continue to invest in right here in Massachusetts. 
As Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, our team also has the opportunity to stand ready to be a partner in the work that's to come. We are certainly thrilled to celebrate this major milestone, but also will be part of the solution in making sure that the reporting expectations are done in collaboration with the Secretary of State, with the Attorney General's Office, and especially with our partners in the business community. And, and I know Governor Healy and Treasurer Goldberg and others will continue to give so much credit to many people who have worked tirelessly to get us to today, but I would be remiss if I didn't take a minute to also share my thanks. I remember in a previous role when I was at the Massachusetts Business Roundtable coming together in this building um, where then State Representative Josh Cutler convened a meeting with former Lieutenant Governor Evelyn Murphy, Brooke Thompson, members from the Greater Boston Chamber, Megan Driscoll, and we were coming together to figure out how can we make this a reality in the next session. And it was that kind of convening power that Lieutenant Governor Murphy really helped to channel, uh, to recognize the willingness to engage multiple partners, to identify opportunities of shared interest, but knowing we had to navigate to get to the finish line and listening to different opinions and really staying dedicated and leading a coalition of organized leaders to make sure that we, we stay at the helm. And so I know that this has been a long journey, well beyond two years, but I appreciate the opportunity that I was able to join you along this amazing journey. Um, and then now, State Representative Josh Cutler is part of my team as Undersecretary of, of Apprenticeship. <laughs> and I would be remiss also if I didn't acknowledge while he is on vacation and having extreme FOMO and missing out on this. Um, <laughs> He's also rolling up his sleeves, making sure that our team will be part of the results um, that will ensure that we are delivering on this amazing promise. And I think that all of this also reflects the teamwork that our administration always emphasizes and clearly represented by the amazing, beautiful room that we have here today, the people that are standing alongside Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. There's been a team that has invested to get us to this major milestone, and we're going to stay working collaboratively as we invest in and think about our greatest asset here in Massachusetts, our talent. So I appreciate the opportunity to celebrate today. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Senator Jalen to join. Gen Senator Jalen serves as chair of the Joint Committee for Labor and Workforce Development. I have the privilege of working alongside Senator Jalen. I only have two minutes and not letting me talk more than that, so I'm not going to thank everybody that was involved in this, but I want to say one thing, which is representation matters. I'm the first woman to chair the Labor and Workforce Development Committee. Look at, our, look at our leadership team here. And uh, one broke the ceiling for a lot of us, Evelyn Murphy. I want to just quickly thank the people that are not here today, which is the Senate President, uh, Karen Spilkum, who first introduced this, uh, the 2016 bill that this bill builds on. Uh, and especially my colleagues who are not here, uh, Josh Cutler, Liz Miranda, uh, Representatives Danielle Gregoire, Randy Fluker Oakley, Dave Rogers, and Hannah Kane, and all of our staffs. We only are as good as our staffs, and I want to thank my staff, uh, especially, and some of, uh, some of the former staffs that are now working elsewhere. Um, so, and especially my chief of staff, Matt Hartman. But no legislation happens just on Beacon Hill. And so the one coalition and the people they organized brought together so many organizations and people. And so I'm gr really grateful. The last negotiations took a long time. A lot of people were frustrated. It came out at the very end a better bill. So persistent pace, and I'm really grateful to everybody that kept going. Knowledge is power in negotiating pay. And when employers were banned from asking salary history in 2016, it made a real difference, we know, for job seekers because of a BU study that found that all job seekers got better offers and women of people of color especially benefited 
the study concluded that it helped close the wage gap. So this bill will help prospective and uh, current employees by giving them the knowledge they need to negotiate. And it will help employers and job seekers both save time and money by not going through the hiring process for jobs the person won't accept. So this is one giant step toward equality and there's a lot more work to do. And this bill gives us knowledge of the industry patterns that it, that knowledge will empower us in that work. So I'm so happy to be here celebrating today and passing the microphone to Christine, my colleague, uh, Representative Christine Barber. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Christine Barber, state rep for Somerville and Medford, and really honored to be here. Uh, thank you. I want to um, thank everyone here today, and I'm overjoyed to be here signing with the governor, signing into law the Francis Perkins Workplace Equity Act. Um, this bill has been a long time coming, and there's a huge. This is a huge team effort, as um, we've heard. When a bill like this happens, it takes so many partners to bring it across the finish line. I am really grateful to former Representative Cutler and to Senator Jalen, who, at the beginning of this term as chairs of Labor and Workforce, made this bill a huge priority. Got the right folks together to get it over the finish line. Um, really grateful to the speaker for prioritizing this and bringing it to the floor early. And to the conference committee, Leader Gregoire, Rep. Fluker Oakley, Rep. Kane, Senator Jalen, Senator Feeney, Senator O'Connor, who really worked hard to get this done in the legislature. So this act pulls from two bills, one of which I filed with Rep. Dave Rogers, and I want to thank him and our staff for their partnership in really working on this issue. Um, there are women leaders around the state, um, leaders who are up here, but so many leaders in this room and who are not here who have worked on this for decades. Um, so grateful, uh, I've learned so much from them and so grateful for their partnership. I also want to give a shout out to Samantha Mewis, who, um, the great soccer player from Massachusetts who testified on this bill. Uh, <laughs> women's soccer. U.S. women's soccer is kicking off like 20 minutes ago for the semifinals, so I felt like uh, women's soccer and their work on the wage gap are really with us in this win today. Um, finally, I want to thank my colleagues on the Mass Caucus of Women Legislators. This bill was our top priority under our Elevating Women's Economic Opportunity. Our executive directors are fantastic. The entire caucus, which is bipartisan and bicameral, worked on this bill, and we're really grateful that we're getting here to sign this today. We know the wage gap persists, but we're taking a critical response today um, towards true pay equity. Under this legislation, le employers are required to disclose salary and hourly wage. And new data collection will make sure that, as the governor said, we can't change what we can't measure and that we know, um, we actually know wage data for gender and racial equity. This is vital to eliminating wage discrimination and creating an equitable workforce in Massachusetts. And I'm really grateful to everyone here for their work in that. And now I am more than honored to pass it on to a real trailblazer and leader in this work, Lieutenant Governor Evelyn Murphy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, when she was the Attorney General, Governor Healy was the leading state official to support public reporting of wage gaps. Her voice was so clear and so strong that the business community knew it had to pay attention to it. I'll come back to that later. But the Wage Equity Now Coalition thanks you, Governor Healy, for your steadfast leadership over years and years. Without her support, we would not be here today. Thank you, Laura Healy. And the coalition thanks the speaker, Mariano, for getting this out of 
the House and over to the Senate, and we thank the Senate President, Karen Spilka, for her leading role in securing the passage of this legislation. You haven't heard about Senator Paul Feeney, but I will tell you, Senator Feeney, you may represent yourself as a modest, humble legislator, but your tour de force intellect, your relentless work, and your commitment to creating equity has gotten us here today. And we thank you, Senator Feely. <laughs> and as mentioned, Senator, uh, Representative Josh Cutler, former representative, is not here today. But his staff worked so hard and so tirelessly and so constructively advancing this bill that we are indeed in great, grateful to Josh Cutler and his team. Thank you, Josh. Someone who's not here today, the Attorney General, Andrea Campbell's forceful testimony this year, or in this session, energized the entire wage equity coalition to steam ahead and to get, to this, get this done this year. There are many other legislators, as you have heard, and exec executives in the executive branch uh, and activists that have been working on this for six, yes, six years. And I will, sounds old fashioned, but I'm gonna write thank you notes to as many as I possibly can get to over the next couple months. So let me tell you something. For me, this journey started with Mayor Marty Walsh, who asked me for language to that he could file to advance wage equity for women and people of color. Then he left town. <laughs> and today he's off in Montana speaking, so. But I want to thank Marty, and I want to thank his incredible, phenomenal colleague, Megan Costello, for bringing me to this place. The, when, the Wage Equity Now WEN Coalition maintained its dynamism due to the unwavering support of the Boston Foundation. So we thank Lee Pelton and Keith Mahoney for their steadfast guidance, and especially Sam Chambers. <laughs> Sam, where are you? Sam Chambers, who informed and energized this coalition and has been a genuine partner for Megan Driscoll and me all the way through this. Thank you. So, yeah. Remember when I said that, that the governor, when she was AG, got the attention of the business community? Well, some leaders grumbled, others hid. But one, Brooke Thompson, Brooke Thompson said, let us work to find a path advancing both women and people of color, workers, and business. She recognized that the Massachusetts economy will only thrive if every single worker feels fairly treated and sees opportunities to move up. It took guts to lead with that perspective. Brooke did, and she deserves enormous credit today. Okay, enough about key pieces of the process, but I wanted you to get a little deeper into some of the dynamics that have been going on and, and the important ones. Anyway, let me finish with two final points about the product, the new bill, the new law. Gender and racial gaps in representation and wages exist in every state. But Massachusetts is now the only state publicly reporting these gaps year after year. It's one thing to say we're for fairness and equity, but it's another to document that fairness and equity. We will be doing that now to honor our commitment to women and people of color working here in Massachusetts, and to say to the rest of the country, 
take a look at Massachusetts because there are real opportunities here to be treated fairly. The legislative process, as you've heard today, is and, and, this, this process in democracy is messy at best. It's literally thousands of little steps, some forward and some backwards. But when we see the outcome, like this one, where all the interests are respected and advanced, I say democracy works. And every one of us. Every one of us needs to fight for it now. I had the honor of co-chairing the Wage Equity Now Coalition with Megan Driscoll. She has more energy than the rest of us all put together. <laughs> Her passion to have salary range transparency is informed by her impressive success as a businesswoman. She is a force, and we owe her a heartfelt thanks for the work she has done to bring us to this day. Megan. Oh, she's a tough act to follow. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm Megan Driscoll. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. I am the former president and CEO of a company called Pharmalogics, which is actually one of the largest recruiting firms in Boston. Um, I, more importantly though, am the co-chair of the WEN Coalition with Evelyn Murphy, which has been, I always said like, if this bill fails and it never passes, I got Ev. <laughs> I got Ev. <laughs> I am beaming with happiness today because after six years, long years, we did it. We have passed the most comprehensive wage equity legislation in the country. And who exactly is the we? The we is women's advocacy groups, BIPOC organizations, businesses, and legislators in both the House and the Senate. How rare is it for all of these entities to get together and agree but this bill is an example of what is possible when we work together towards a common goal. I really hope that this spirit of collaboration serves as a future, uh, future model for legislation. Maybe for the economic development bill, we'll see. <laughs> there is no mountain we cannot climb when we climb it together. I am really proud of us. This bill will have profound effect on the long-standing racial and gender bias that exists in the workplace. Building a vibrant and competitive economy requires that employees are paid fairly, and today we have sent a very strong message to people of color and women in Massachusetts. We hear you, we see you, you are the economic engine of this state, and we stand behind you. Thank you to everyone who today played a part in getting this legislation across the finish line. I do want to make one stop and see, is Tomlin in the, in the room? Where is Tomlin? Could you please stand up? This is Francis Perkins' grandson. I called him a few months ago and I said, hey, we might have a bill pass, not sure. Uh, it's called the Francis per Perkins Workplace Bill, and he said, I'll be there. I'll come from wherever to come. So, thank you. We've thanked a lot of people, and I don't want to repeat, but I do want to say an enormous thank you to Governor Healy and to um, LG Driscoll for signing this legislation into law, but more importantly, for providing a living model of what is possible for our girls. May the sky be their only limit. The Boston Foundation gave WEN Coalition a home and provided the structure and the support that it needed to achieve its mission. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Lee Pelton from the Boston Foundation to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, so good afternoon. And uh, uh, Governor, you know, you really know how to throw a party. So <laughs> thank you for being here. Uh, I was introduced as Dr. Pelton, but uh, I'm Lee. Only my children have to call me Dr. Pelton. So, uh, 
as one does. Yes, as one does. So I, I want to begin by thanking you, Governor, uh, Senator Spilka, Speaker Mariano, as well as our many partners in government and both the administration and the legislature for getting this bill through and bringing us to this day. It was more than four years ago that Evelyn Murphy, uh, whom we all know, uh, reached out to me while I was still president of Emerson College to urge me to support the effort to begin to close the Commonwealth's wage gap, that it left many women and others behind in salary, promotions, and benefits. In other words, to close the power gap, because this is what this really is. It is a power and privilege gap that we're seeking to close. And of course, we all know when Evelyn asks for your support, uh, there's only one answer, and no is not one of them. So I told her uh, uh, to count on my support then, and so when I left Emerson to become uh, president and CEO of the Boston Foundation, it was wonderful to join forces with her to host the Wage Equity Now Coalition with Keith. You've been called out, and Sam, still over there. Thank you so very much. So most of all, we are indebted to the heroic and tenacious effort li uh, led by the Wage Equity Now Coalition and its co-chairs, or perhaps we should call them champions or warriors, uh, Evelyn and Megan. Thank you so very, very much. You know, as you've heard, arriving at this place has not been easy. However, as has been famously said, they persisted. And we are very grateful for their persistence because we know in our hearts and our minds that the essence of the issue is fundamentally about human dignity and human worth. And the American ideal, still unfulfilled, that if you work hard, you should be paid just as much as the man working next to you. So the passage of this bill represents a generational and cultural shift for many of us from a time when women and other members of our society were expected to receive less even when they worked more. People who did not have a seat at the table of bounty. And so I want to thank and applaud the many coalition members, too numerous to mention here. I want to thank you. Thank you also to Brooke uh, so much uh, for your uh, support. Uh, and of course, the many business leaders and the advocates who stood steadfast behind this bill as it went through the process. The Francis Perkins Workplace Equity Act empowers us to face the state of wage equity in the workplace. It also puts us on a path towards changing it for so many residents of the Commonwealth. Because when job seekers seek the salary range of the jobs that they're interested in, they can be confident that they are being paid fairly and equitably, resulting in better choices for themselves and their families. And this law will shine a bright light, a very bright light, on which industries in the Commonwealth are working towards closing the wage gap or the power gap, as I named it earlier. Transparency builds accountability. And this law and the transparency it brings will help close the wage gap and build a commonwealth that can better attract and retain our talent. It will also send a message to our nation and the world that Massachusetts doesn't just produce world-class workers, we also understand how to keep them here. So, uh, <laughs> yes. And now it's my pleasure to turn over the microphone to uh, Deliza Nova, who is head of the strategy and development at Amplify Latinx. Muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Governor Healy, for your unwavering commitment to creating a fairer and more equitable Massachusetts. It is an honor to be here today on behalf of Amplify Latinx as we celebrate this pivotal moment in our state's history, because this is historic, guys. Three years ago, Amplify Latinx joined the Wage Equity Now Coalition to support the vision and life's work of our esteemed former Lieutenant Governor, Evelyn Murphy. 
Evelyn called our co-founder, president and CEO, Anida Roman, who was unable to join us today but sends her love, and she said, presente, because we don't say no to Evelyn. <laughs> Evelyn's dedication to addressing wage inequities has been a guiding light for all of us committed to this cause. Today, we witnessed a significant milestone in that journey with the signing of the Wage Transparency Act, or Evelyn's bill. <laughs> this act is not just a policy change. It is a powerful step forward towards justice and equity for all workers in our commonwealth. The wage gap remains a significant barrier, particularly for women and communities of color. According to the National Partnership for Women and Families, Latinas in Massachusetts earn only, I had 49 cents, but the governor said 42, so we're gonna use that one. 49 cents for every dollar earned by a white, non-Hispanic man. This is an unjust disparity that limits opportunities for our families and hinders the economic growth of all of us. At Amplify Latinx, we are dedicated to advancing economic empowerment and social equity for the Latinx community and other underserved populations. This legislation aligns with our mission to eliminate barriers that perpetuate inequality and to ensure that everyone has access to opportunities that lead to economic prosperity. We are deeply grateful to Megan Driscoll, Andrea Silbert, Brooke Thompson, and our, all our coalition partners, including the Boston Foundation and all our male allies, because we wouldn't be here without them either. Because working in unison, they created a more equitable Massachusetts. Your tireless efforts and collaboration have been instrumental in bringing about this historic change. This act is more than a legal obligation. It is a declaration of our collective commitment to justice and fairness. It is a reminder that when we stand together and demand change, we can create a more equitable society where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. As we celebrate this achievement, let us also recognize that we still have a lot of work to do. Thank you again, Governor Haley, for your leadership and vision and for making Evelyn's bill into law. <laughs> Together, let us build a future where equity and opportunity are within reach for every resident of Massachusetts. And back to you, Governor. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow, okay. Um, at this point, here's what we're gonna do. I also um, want to, we're gonna, get, we're gonna go sign this, it's gonna be awesome. Yes. Um, I also wanna recognize Donella Clark, who is chair of the Mass Commission on the Status of Women. Yeah. Thank you for your leadership. All right? In the, and um, I also appreciate Beth Chandler, you know, former head of YW, long champion for gender equity on so many fronts, now at Point 32 Health. Maria Mosaitis, um, Office of the Child Advocate, thank you. That's great. Um, so awesome. We're going to move this to the other side, and you guys are going to come in, or what are we going to do? We're going to, okay.